Hello friends, welcome back to Good Life Farm. So I have received a lot of questions about cookbooks lately. I own a lot of cookbooks. When you have been a food writer for, gosh, going on 15 years or more, you have a tendency to collect lots of cookbooks. Um, oh, and if you hear that noise, Mr. Smith just started the lawnmower. I use my big collection of cookbooks to do research on recipes and all sorts of things. Um, for instance, if there was something I was wanting to make, I would look at multiple different recipes for that thing. I would pull the pieces out that I like to kind of merge them into my own recipe. And so that's how I develop a lot of recipes. That's something else that I get asked about. But today I'm talking about some very specific cookbooks. Um, and that is, set my coffee down, that is cookbooks about canning. Now I don't have anywhere near as many canning cookbooks as I do all of the rest of my cookbooks. And so I thought I would just share with you the canning cookbooks that I have and just show them to you since I have been asked about them a lot lately. So the very first canning cookbook that I ever bought was this one, the classic ball blue book. Um, and it has canning, freezing, and dehydrating. And as you can see, I've actually got this in a binder because I use it so much that the binding of the book just completely fell apart. And so I took all of the pages and put them in this binder, in these document protectors, so that I can still use it and not lose pages. The next one I have kind of goes with that one, and that is the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving, 400 Delicious Creative Recipes for Today. And this particular book actually has many of the same recipes as the Ball uh, Blue Book has, um, but it's got a little bit more information, it's got some more recipes, and it's a great, just basic guide. If, if, if I could only have one canning cookbook, it would be this canning cookbook. And you can find this all over the place. Um, I will put some links down below to all of the books that I share with you today. Now I do have two canning cookbooks that I haven't actually even looked at yet. I just got them. Uh, the first one is the Homestead Canning Cookbook by Georgia Verosa. I think that's how you say her name. Um, but this one had some pretty good reviews. On the back it said, bless your family with healthy organic food. So that kind of caught my eye. But it looks like it's got a lot of basic recipes, but then it looked like there were some new things in here that I hadn't seen in my other books and me being a cookbook collector, how could I resist? So, like I said, I haven't even really looked through this one yet, but um, it looks pretty good. And then this is another new one for me. It's called the Big Book of Preserving the Harvest, 150 Recipes for Freezing, Canning, Drying, Pickling, Fruits and Vegetables by Carol Kossenbader. There you go. And you can tell, you can tell these are new because there's no tabs sticking out of them. Uh, most of my cookbooks tend to look a lot like this with all sorts of tabs and notes and things sticking out of recipes that I want to do, alterations I've made, etc. Um, so those, those two are pristine, so that's how you know they're new. All right, so the next one I have here is the Blue Ribbon Canning Book, award-winning recipes, jams, preserves, pickle sauces, and more by Linda J. Ament. And this one's got all sorts of goodies in here. A lot of the recipes that you see in here are basic recipes or they're ones that have like a little bit of a spin on them like Georgia peach and basil preserves. And of course these are all um, award-winning types of recipes. And so 
um, who can who can kind of resist a cookbook like that, right? Rhubarb red raspberry jelly. Oh, pomegranate red wine jelly. Doesn't that sound interesting? Hmm. Mango raspberry, raspberry plum, sweet cherry, ripe gooseberry jam, all sorts of goodies in here. Oh, including, I just saw a cantaloupe, cantaloupe jelly. I actually had someone ask me not too long ago about a, can a cantaloupe um, preserve recipe. This one, this one has one in there. All right, my next two canning books are specifically pressure canning. Uh, this one here is Angie Schneider's Pressure Canning for Beginners and Beyond. And as you can see, there's lots of goodies that um, I have marked to make or I have made. Uh, lots of meal prep types of recipes in this one. So great things to have in the pantry for quick meals, things that you would dump in a pan and heat up and maybe add a couple little things to. Um, I know there's like some pot pie fillings in here that don't have any thickener. You add the thickener later. Um, super like great recipes in here. The other one is the complete guide to pressure canning. This one's got lots of recipes in here. Again, when it comes to canning, pressure canning is when you have low acid foods. So these are going to be low acid vegetables. It's going to be meats. It's going to be um, meal prep, meals in a jar types of things. That's, when, that's what you're gonna find in the pressure canning cookbooks. My next one has kind of a fun name. It is called Nacho Mama's Canning Book. And what I like about this one is the recipes are all kind of different, like Korean barbecue sauce or um, candied jalapenos, although that one's kind of like your cowboy candy. Um, ginger lime marmalade. There's uh, ginger peach butter, vanilla fig preserves. And what's nice about this particular um, canning book is in the front, there's a whole bunch of canning recipes. Towards the back, there's recipes how you would use those things. So the things that you can up, there's recipes and ideas on how to actually use those. Um, for instance, those Korean, uh, the Korean barbecue sauce, there was a recipe for um, barbecue, like Korean style barbecue ribs further back. Um, so that's another one. Now these next ones are kind of, I guess you could call them specialty sort of canning cookbooks. One of the questions that I get a lot when I'm sharing preserves types of recipes, jellies, jams, etc., is can you make this recipe with less sugar? Um, often the answer to that would be maybe. <laughs> because when it comes to jellies and jams, the sugar is actually what helps the pectin activate and, and gel up and thicken. And if you have too little sugar, then your jellies and jams can't thicken up, at least not with regular pectin. There are low sugar pectins. You're still gonna have to have some kind of sugar usually. So when you are using the low no sugar pectin, you are going to have a lower sugar um, quantity, but you have to make sure you're using those kinds of recipes. Um, you can't just reduce the sugar in a traditional jelly or jam. You've gotta make sure it's low sugar pectin and a low sugar recipe. And this particular cookbook is for a type of pectin that is specifically for low sugar cooking and it's called Pomona's Universal Pectin. And so this cookbook is actually all recipes that would use that pectin, which means you're going to find lots of low or no sugar types of recipes in this cookbook. So if you are somebody who has been wanting to can with less sugar, I would check this one out. And along those lines is this one, Naturally Sweet Food in Jars. This cookbook does not use 
regular granulated sugar. It has 100 preserves made with coconut sugar, maple, honey, and more. So this one you can find agave syrup, you can find all sorts of alternative sweeteners other than sugar, granulated sugar. And so this is another one that I would highly recommend if you are wanting to can things and not use granulated sugar or at least use a much lower uh, glycemic type of sweetener. Now in a video back in January, I did some canning with Weck jars and I got a ton of feedback about those jars because number one, people didn't even know you could can in them. Um, people didn't ever hear of them, many people. But one of the biggies is Weck jars are from Europe. So the measurements aren't pints and quarts like we would have here. I did talk in there though about how you can use the Weck jars and convert them over to our American canning um, recipes, but you could also get a Weck canning book. And so this one is Weck Home Preserving, made from scratch recipes for water bath, canning, fermenting, pickling, and more. And this one is by Stephanie Thoreau, Master Food Preserver. And it says it has 75 small batch recipes. So if you have gotten yourself some Weck canning jars, and I talked about it in that video that one of the reasons I like using them is the lids are glass. They have that heavy rubber gasket and you can use it over and over and over and over again without having to buy new lids all the time. So that is an option if you want to use Weck jars and learn a little bit more. And then one last book that I have. Now this isn't a regular canning cookbook, but it is a great book for someone who is just getting started canning, lots of great beginner information. It is called The Farm Girl's Guide to Preserving the Harvest. The author of this book, Anne, is actually a friend of mine, and I would definitely be remiss if I did not mention this book. She has all sorts of excellent information here on different types of canners, picking the right foods that you would want to put in a jar, and just all sorts of great tips, including some things that you definitely don't want to do, things that would not be considered safe. And so she goes into a lot of the science on that. And then she's also got some other information in the back, not just canning, but also dehydrating and freezing and fermenting. So there you go. So those are all of my canning books that I have here on the homestead. If you have any thoughts on any of those, definitely leave them in the comments down below. And like I said, I will find links for all of these and put them in the video description underneath. So that is it for today. Thanks for hanging out with me here again in the homestead kitchen. My name is Constance at A Good Life Farm and I'll talk to you all next time.